Okay. Uh, uh, first, Leon, I, I have to say first that I'm very new to the, to the subject, but I have two questions that, uh, that I came up with during your talk. The first one is, as far as I understood, in the main field games, you have each, a uh, each agent in the whole game that uh, has its own probability distribution. Uh, the response on the strategy is a probability distribution, or um, did I did I understood that correctly? Or no, that's, that's not the case. Uh, so all the agents, there is a sing uh, to describe the whole population. There is a single probability measure. Sorry, okay. the entire game or the the response of the strategy for yeah, each don't, agent. Don't, don't, don't say, okay. So I uh, I mentioned game. Don't think of games. Think really in terms of Nash equilibria. Okay. Okay. Which so it's really about the Nash equilibrium. So don't think in terms of strategy. Th think of the in terms of uh, Nash equilibrium. Otherwise, it's going to be complicated. Mm -hmm. So in terms of Nash equilibrium, uh, you, you, each, each generic player is trying to optimize uh, a, a certain criterion that depends on the whole population, and the whole population is described by a probability measure. Okay. Okay. And so Nash equilibrium. Don't right. think about uh, I, 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 I see what you are aiming at. You're probably interested or, or knowledgeable in game theory, but uh, no, this is a little bit on the side, so don't don't worry about. Okay, it. that was probably yeah. Uh, then I then I got it wrong. But then there I have another question, which is related to the correlation uh, uh, of the of the responses of the strategy. So suppose again, I'm probably going again in a different direction, but each each strategy each response of 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 the agent is okay. correlated to another one okay so the if you wanted to 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 see this type of topics and again i see what uh, you're aiming at uh it would be to uh, to the next question that we don't know to solve to solve how to solve except in some cases which would be to say okay so n goes to infinity so those nice equilibria we have a mean field regime can we describe the fluctuations, and that's where the correlations between the actions of the various players in a finite game are going to play are, are going to play a role? Can we say anything about the fluctuation uh, uh, in this uh, limit? Yes. So we can answer that only on very, very, very explicit examples. In general, we have no theory. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Other question? No. Okay. Okay, uh, thank you for the nice talk. Yeah. So, uh, sorry. The MFG uh, monster or whatever. Now, w where does it come from? Is it, is it clearly a model uh, that everyone agrees on or it comes from, from a limit analysis or? Okay, so uh, it's indeed the limit as n goes to infinity of, Nash, of dynamical Nash equilibria for a finite uh, player game. And you, you get all these equations by this? You get all these. Uh, and um, the, uh, uh, the full justification as n goes to infinity has been done in situation where we know that the, mean, the master law, the monster equation, has a unique solution. Okay? The, uh, then the limit as n goes to infinity has been fully justified. Thank you. Um, I just uh, want to ask a question. Um, in physics, we start with the entropy. Uh, you know the statistical mechanics. And so what is entropy in your theory? So oh, you no mentioned entropy. the generator. Oh, you don't, there is you no don't need entropy. Oh. <laughs> so you just need the generating function? Yeah, no, I mean, again, uh, this is... Um, uh, um, I, I'm not sure I understand fully how entropy, is, uh, entropy pops up uh, uh, in general. And uh, so it's hard when you don't understand something, it's hard to answer a question about that something. Uh, 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 but the, the way it's being used, which is not the same as how it ha happens, this I understand in, let's say, classical statistical mechanics or statistical physics or the, uh, the, the, the principle of thermodynamics. Right? which postulate that there is something like an entropy. So the question is, uh, uh, are is there something like the entropy here? And that's a little bit dangerous, uh, because I think that in terms of information, we are in a totally different situation. Uh, because indeed, we have uh, uh, like n particles, my players, which have a certain dynamical uh, evolution, which is fine. This is consistent. This could be consistent 
with thermodynamic equilibrium and so on, but they are not particles, they are agents, which means that they anticipate. And uh, so the, uh, the arrow of time is completely screwed, uh, forgive me for the expression. Uh, so it goes forward in time because that's the evolution of a, uh, of a system, but it goes backward in time because choosing is about anticipating. So uh, this might explain why we have never experienced any kind of entropy playing a role there. Okay. So forward, backward. And that's anticipation. And that's absolutely crucial. Now anticipation comes with a certain depth. You know, uh, uh, so when you reduce that depth, in the sense that it's a so-called intertemporal preference rate, uh, uh, which measure how important the future is for your two-day decision, and so if the future is as important as the present, okay, there is real anticipation. But if somehow you discount the future so fast that essentially all the present uh, uh, counts, what you get as a limit of, uh, of uh, uh, minfield games, just reducing the, uh, uh, the, you know, the anticipation to now, you, you get agent-based models, classical agent-based models. The decision is being made instantaneously. Okay. Then, if the decision is being made instantaneously, you're going to see entropy functionals playing a role. Uh, but uh, with anticipation, I've never seen anything like, you know, uh, you know, inspired by entropy. But I might be wrong, <laughs> since I don't understand the entropy. Yeah. Other question? Yes. Yeah, please. <coughs> Greeting, Professor. Um, I'm also an undergraduate physics student, so here I got some questions naturally correspond to physics-like questions. So in the first case of the towers and beach problem, can I understand this is a... Uh, I'm sorry, the what? The towers in the beach oh problem. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Can I understand it uh, as a, a, there is a bunch of particles in the box. Uh, we want w Maybe they are repelling each other or they are just attracting each other. So the naturally, the equilibrium would be either the homogeneous distribution, either they are just boom, boom together. So this is the first question. And the second question is, um, uh, correspond to that what you have mentioned, there is no, or, or there is or no time in, in the game or with respect to the, the particle case. I'm not really, um, get it, could you please and just, um, explain it more. And the third question is, um, is there any uh, phase transition in the <laughs> game? Okay, so uh, uh, very good questions. Um, you could give a posteriori when the criterion, uh, uh, when the criterion is a gradient and interpretation, uh, uh, like uh, particles for the uh, uh, for for the towers and the beach. In general, in general, if I take my g and I keep epsilon strictly positive you can prove that there is no single optimization problem that yields this, uh, 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 this equilibrium, which means that you cannot obtain it by any kind of classical particles or quantum particles because you will, you're going to have uh, an energy minimization principle. So the answer is different. Okay? And uh, the fact that they choose, that they anticipate, means that uh, it's uh, completely different. Now, uh, uh, your second question is about, uh, 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 about phase transition, which was in fact evoked as with big question marks, fluctuations, uh, 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 phase transitions. I have no clue. <laughs> I, clearly, from a physics point of view, let's be frank, mean field theories are boring. Okay? Uh, that's simple. It's well known. Okay? In the context of game theory, mean field theorems were not known, so it's a new world. Uh, the next step should be about, uh, should be, I mean, uh, you know, if one can dream that there will be one day a, a next step about uh, phase transition, which uh, in some sense would explain how you uh, go from one place of interest on the beach to the other, you know, when you're going to switch from one to the other, what kind of transition to uh, take place. And uh, here is uh, part of the difficulty which uh, makes the difficulty, I mean, the fact that we are dealing with games and so on may make the problems intractable for me now. Uh, uh, the point is uh, the following, is that as you well know, 
a, a mean field series are possible because you have uh, weak interactions. Okay. Uh, and uh, in order to have, uh, uh, to have this type of phase, uh, phase transitions, you're, you're going to have to go beyond weak interactions. And that's a serious, serious problem because what does that mean in my terminology, and that's consistent with what we can observe, in that here I had a crowd of small agents. Weak interaction because they're automatically small in some sense. Now, if I want to explain phenomena like you know, the brutal transitions and so on, I need to invoke at least a few big players, which are going to guide the rest of the population. All of them being good, being big, or at least a few big ones, maybe. But I have to go beyond weak interactions. And this way, we, 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 we don't have any kind of mathematical tools to begin that story now. It will come, but another life. <laughs> <laughs> another question? Uh, there. Uh, so how do you solve the mean, game, uh, mean field game uh, on computers? I oh, guess the, numerically. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Uh, uh, excellent question as well. Um, <coughs> uh, we do what we can. <laughs> OK, uh, so in one of the transparency, I went very fast. There are three types of numerical. Uh, we have basically three types. So in worldwide, there has been three types of numerical methods which are available. Uh, in fact, uh, that was the first question that Bob Lucas, uh, Bob Lucas, I, I remember I, uh, I gave a small private talk in, uh, in front of all the Nobel Prize winners in economics in Chicago and, and the other professors. It was very, very impressive. The guy were picking the ideas incredibly fast. And uh, at the end, uh, Bob Lucas said, oh, that's cool. How do you compute those stuff? <laughs> mm -hmm. And I said, well, we do what we can. <laughs> was disappointed. Huh? <laughs> uh, but anyway, so we have, uh, we have three types of, uh, of proofs. Uh, one is really a full discretization and Newton methods at the level of discrete model, brutal. And the discretization is being mod uh, made in a very careful way so to preserve some kind of conserved quantities. Okay. That's one. So typical finite elements, but we do very carefully the discretization. And, uh, and, uh, and then you have a nonlinear system of uh, ordinary differential equations and then iteration by essentially Newton-like. Okay. I would call this brutal way. Okay. Then there are other ways which are some very specific iteration, like guessing what M is, getting the U, getting the M, getting the U. This in general doesn't converge, but in some cases you know how to handle those iterations. So it's an equilibrium, do fixed point arguments. And the third thing is to introduce an, another time, which is uh, like the learning time. So like a relaxation time. So you add one more variable, so it's very heavy. Okay, so suppose that you have already a two-dimensional, uh, two, uh, 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 two variables to, uh, to, to describe a player. You have the real-time uh, variable and you introduce another time. It becomes a four-dimensional problem. Okay. So it's very heavy. Uh, it's like a despite method, but this is a very, very uh, 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 stable method, which uh, you know, I, I, in some sense creates a deformation uh, towards an equilibrium. Uh, in general, given a totally new problem, uh, we may not be able to make the computation. Fortunately, while well, there is a fourth method, is that in some cases uh, we can uh, reduce the problem to the optimal control of a partial differential equation. And the forward-backward nature of the problem becomes the optimality conditions for the optimal control problem of NPDs. Okay. Uh, so then you solve the optimization problem, which is the optimal control problem. Sorry about this long answer, but I'm giving the full details. So four, uh, uh, four methods, given a, uh, uh, given a model, we may not be able to solve it numerically, to be honest. Until now, we have always managed doing what we can to, to, uh, to, uh, uh, to use one of the existing methods and twist it a little bit and make it work. Uh, the even worse part is how do we make computation in, in infinite dimensions? Kressel Smith, again, those two guys, what did they do? They made a description, so the noise are kind of shocks, what they call shocks, uh, uh, which make the infinite dimensional problem, uh, uh, were happening from time to time. And, they, and then the population would switch to one state to the other 
in terms of work production and consumption. So it was this, this type of microeconomical problem. So they set up, and this depends on the, uh, on the, the, uh, the state of the, uh, the, 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 the whole population. So they wrote a set of rules explaining, uh, depending on the set of population, each player will do this and that without writing more than this. And then they made a numerical computation in three dimension. It's incredible. A huge, massive Monte Carlo simulation. Uh, they cannot compute the full measure, so they, they did a moment the, uh, uh, a moment-based description of the measure, computing the first 10 moments. And they add this uh, conclusion out of the numerics. That's why economists didn't understand anything about this data. And the conclusion was that 90% of what they were uh, getting depended only on the first moment of the, uh, uh, of the, of the probability distribution of the population. So uh, the bottom line is that they had a very crude approximation method. And we have been working very, very carefully about hierarchies. It's like a tree-like uh, uh, approximation of this infinite dimensional problem where basically you have at some times, which are in some sense random, it's a Poisson type noise, you have shocks. So it creates like some kind of trees and we make computations which are very, very heavy computation. The guy who is in really in charge of the best numerical development in, uh, you know, in this uh, community is Ajdou, Yves Ajdou uh, in Paris, <coughs> former student of Olivier Pirot. That's a long answer to your question, but it's difficult. Okay. And we do what we can. So we have time for two or three additional questions, if <laughs> there are still some questions. So if not, so let's thank again, <laughs> Professor Lyons. Oh.